So I promised you in the last video I'd explain why the weight lattice of SU3 is this triangular lattice um, with sort of angles of 120 or 60 degrees. Um, and the reason is these weight lattices actually have an intrinsic notion of geometry. Uh, they know about angles and lengths and things. Um, and that geometry comes from a structure called the killing form. So let little g be a Lie algebra. The killing form of g uh, is the map k from g times g to the field we're working over, which most of the time is c, um, defined by k of x comma y equals the trace of add x times add y. So what does this mean? Add x, remember, is the thing that sends z in the Lie algebra to x bracket z. So add x is a map from the Lie algebra to itself. Add y is a map from the Lie algebra to itself. Add x, add y is the map from little g to little g that sends z to x bracket y bracket z. Okay, that's a linear map from the Lie algebra to itself. We can think of it as a matrix if we pick a basis of g, and then we take the trace of that matrix. So I said pick a basis of little g and then take the trace of the corresponding matrix. The answer doesn't actually depend on the choice of basis because if I change basis, what that what that does is to um, conjugate the matrix of the linear map by some change of basis matrix, and the trace is invariant under conjugation. So it doesn't matter which basis of little g you pick, you always get the same answer here. What kind of a mathematical object is the killing form K? Well, it's what's called a symmetric bilinear form. It's symmetric, which means if I switch X and Y, I get the same answer. Well, that's true because if I switch these two matrices, I don't change the trace because trace of AB equals trace of BA, just for any two matrices. It's bilinear. That means if I take some linear combination of things instead of X, then I can multiply out brackets um, and expand this function um, in terms of the X or in terms of the Y. So it's linear in both X and in Y. And that's just because add as a map from little g to little gl of little g is a linear map. It's a representation of Lie algebras. So this x comes in with an add and the y comes in with an add. They're both linear. So we get something that's bilinear. It's linear in both x and y. So I want to think of k as like a dot product because the dot product is also something which is uh, symmetric and bilinear. So it turns out that under certain conditions, we can really think of it as a dot product. Um, basically, we want uh, x dot x to be positive, right, if x is non-zero. And under certain conditions, which we'll discuss later, that's going to be true uh, for the killing form restricted to certain subspaces like h little r. Uh, but we'll talk more about that later. What I want to do in this video is calculate an example. So the example I want to do is um, on SU3. I want to take H13. This was the matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 1. And H23. This was the matrix 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1. And together these guys span this subspace little h r. Right, this was the set of matrices theta 1, theta 2, minus theta 1, minus theta 2 diagonal. With theta 1, theta 2 real. That's because this matrix here is just uh, theta 1 times h13 plus theta 2 times h23. 
So what I want to do is compute the killing form applied to H1, sorry, H13, H13, the killing form applied to H23, H23, and the killing form applied to uh, H13 and H23. And we'll see that this is a lot like a dot product. This will turn out to be 12, this will turn out to be 12, and this will turn out to be 6. Um, so if we think of this as a dot product, that's saying H13 has length root 12, H23 has length root 12, and the dot product between H13 and H23 is 6. So if you rescale them to make them unit vectors, that would divide by root 12 times root 12. So sort of H13 over its length dotted with H23 over its length would be uh, a half which is cos of uh, 60 degrees. So these two guys would be at 60 degrees to one another. So this is moving towards telling us where the 120 degrees is coming from. Okay, so let's calculate uh, these expressions and check they really are 12, 12, and six. So I need to figure out first, what is add H13? Well, it's a map from little sl3c to little sl3c. Remember, this is the complexification of little su3. I need to figure out what it does on a basis. So what is a basis for little sl3c? Well, we have h13 and h23. They span the diagonal matrices. I have e12, e21. I'm going to need some more space. Uh, e 1, 3, E3, 1, E2, 3, and E3, 1, uh, sorry, E3, 2, where these matrices, these E's, are the things that have zeros everywhere except in position I, J, like in position 1, 2 for E1, 2, where they have a 1. Okay, if I bracket H1, 3 with H1, 3, which is, you know, that's what add does, right? It sends something to its bracket with whatever's in the subscript here, so this will go to h13 bracket h13. That's going to give me zero because um, it commuted itself. Similarly, h13 bracket h23 is zero because both matrices are diagonal, so they commute with one another. e12, if you calculate h13 bracket e12, um, this will turn out to be E12. Um, so we had a formula uh, for add H theta of Eij. This was theta I minus theta J times Eij. So here I and J are one and two, and theta one is one, theta two is zero for H13, and that's what gives us this. Similarly, uh, E21 is going to go to minus E21. E13 turns out maps to E2, E2, uh, E13. Blah. Let me say that again. E13 maps to 2, E13. Uh, E31 maps to minus 2, E31. E23 maps to um, E23. And E32 maps to minus E32. Um, so you can check those. These are all supposed to be H13 bracketed with whatever is in this left-hand column. So as a matrix, with respect to this basis here, add H13 is diagonal because everything is mapping to a multiple of itself. The first two diagonal entries are 0 and 0. Then we have 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2, 1, minus 1. And we get this big eight by eight matrix. Most of the entries are zero, except for these diagonal entries. So that's the matrix add H13 with respect to this basis. Let's uh, copy this bit because I'm going to need exactly that again and get another page. So we now need to calculate uh, add H23. Well, again, H13 is going to go to H23 bracket H13, which is zero. Similarly, H23 is going to go to zero. 
E12 is now going to go to um, minus E12. E21 is going to go to E21. Uh, E13 is going to go to E13. E31 is going to go to E uh, minus E31. E23 is going to go to 2E23. And E32 is going to go to minus 2E32. Okay, so the big difference here is the sign change that's happened here and the fact that the factor of 2 has moved. Um, so as a matrix, add H23 is 0, 0, minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2. So now we can calculate the killing form. So H13 with itself is going to be the trace of, let's copy that matrix from above, add H13. multiply by itself. Right, this is add h13 times add h13. So if I multiply these two together I get another diagonal matrix which is just uh, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 4, 1, 1. And if I add together those diagonal elements, I get 12. So that's the trace. So that's the killing form of H13 with itself. And similarly, if you look at this matrix, the diagonal entries are basically the same, just permuted signs changed. So um, this is also going to be K of H23, H23. What about uh, K of H13, H23? Well, I'm going to take the trace of, still there, H13. This is, um, sorry, this is add H13. And then I want this one, which is add H23. Okay, so let's multiply these guys together and take the trace. So multiplying, they're both diagonal, I can just multiply the diagonal elements. I'm gonna get zero, zero, uh, minus one, minus one, two, two, uh, two, two. So that's two plus two plus two plus two, minus one, minus one, that gives me six. Okay, so this is our first example this is what you have to do if you want to calculate the killing form explicitly. You have to pick a basis of your Lie algebra, compute add of each of add of whatever you're calculating against each of those basis elements, write that as a matrix, and then multiply the matrices together and take the trace.